Hello, and welcome back. I'm Ron Mullet. In this series of videos, I'm going to make a special project for my wife, a china cabinet made of cherry. I've had this cherry in my lumber rack for years and years, just waiting for that perfect project. And this is it. Some of these boards, like this one, is 14 inches wide and 10 feet long. This one is 13 inches wide and 10 feet long. This is wonderful cherry and I'm anxious to get started. This will be a series of videos step by step of how I make this. I hope you'll come along for the journey. So let's get started. Since I don't have large enough stock for the legs, I like to cut 45 degree bevels to get face grain on two exposed sides. I take the two pieces and put them back together with blue painter's tape. After applying glue to both sides, the tape causes them to snap together like a spring clamp. Check for square and I'm happy. Getting 13 inch by 12 foot long boards into my one car garage shop can be a challenge. This board is 12 feet long and without the, without the sap wood on the edge, it's going to be around 11 inches, uh, 10 and a half, 11 inches wide. That's not wide enough for the panels on the side of the cabinet. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take and cut out about 70 inches between these two bark inclusions here, knots, whatever you want to call them. And then I'm going to resaw that and book match it and then glue it back together. And then I can trim that down and that will give me the proper size, uh, length and width for the panels in the side of the cabinet. After taking those boards, straight lining them, cutting them down to 10 inches wide, resawing them on the band saw, and then planing them down to 3 16ths of an inch thick, I now can open these up in a book match pattern, glue those together, and I'll end up with a 21, 20 and a half inch panel that I can use for the sides of the case. Now it's time to lay out for the mortises on the legs. I clamp them together to make it easier to mark all at the same time. I'm going to be using this mortising jig. This is by far the best one I've ever built. I'll leave a link below to Philip Morley's website. I'm going to use loose mortise and tenon joinery in this project to attach the legs to the styles. So what I have marked is the center line of the mortise this way and that way on this jig there's a center line marked right here and there's a center line that i have on this little piece of wood that will fit down in that slot so what i'll do is i'll put that little piece of wood in there set this up put it in the clamps and line it up with the center line this way okay line that up now then I loosen these and I move this back and forth until I get this center line exactly with the center line in the leg. Tighten that down, take this out. Now the length of my mortise is going to be an inch and a half. So uh, the formula I use to uh, arrive at that length of mortise is my router base is five and three quarter inches wide. 
So I take five and three quarters inch, add to that the length of the mortise, which is an inch and a half, and subtract the size of the router bit, which is three eighths. And I come up with a length of six and seven eighths. So I cut a piece of wood that is exactly six and seven eighths, and then I mark a center line of this board. I put this, lay this down, and slide these two pieces of wood up against it, get those squared up like that, and then I move it back and forth until this center line matches here. Lock these down. Now that sets the length of my mortise. All I have to do now, set my router down in the groove, adjust the depth of the router to match the depth of the mortise, and slide it back and forth and keep going down each time and I've got a mortise. I'm going to do the same thing in the styles also. I'm cutting the grooves for the glued up panels on my router table. It's set back an eighth of an inch so I use a spacer to adjust the fence. The grooves on the rails are cut all the way through but the legs have stopped grooves. Now let's put all these parts together and see how they fit. Well, that looks good to me. And now it's time to mark out the mortises for the cross rails that grow, go across between the legs between the drawers. These right here, they're going to be three quarters of an inch thick and they're about two inches deep. So I'm going to mortise them into the legs. The mortise is only going to be a half inch square, so I'll cut it on my mortising machine. I use my block plane to chamfer the edges on the bottom of the legs. This stops the wood from splitting whenever the chest is slid across the floor. So here's all the parts. I'll do a dry fit to make sure it's ready for glue up. Well, here it is complete. I've mortised in the drawer runners and the kickers, everything, the legs, everything is secured. It's good and sturdy. I'm real pleased with the way the end panels turned out. In my next video, I'm going to make drawers for this. Leave a comment below and tell me what you think. Join me on my next one. Enjoy your woodworking.